40 is supposed to be the beginning of life, the new life. Everything's supposed to start at 40, but it's not starting, it's not working. Why, why, what's the point? So I said, okay, you know what? You have to first focus on how you're gonna get yourself back on your feet, what's the next step with work, what projects are you doing? And I threw myself at whatever work I could get, got a TV show, I was on K24 Talk Central, I was excited, it was working, I started that, January um, of, of uh, 2017. And so by the time I was celebrating my 41st birthday, I didn't want anything big. I didn't want anything because I was not happy with 40. It was not working for me. But all of you, the ones I met, I was like, yeah, 40, you know, it's new. Uh, I was giving you guys the spiel. The friends of mine who are here, they are hearing this for the first time, some of them. I was giving you the spiel, sorry, but I was trying to survive with my heartbreaks and what I thought 40 was, was not. And so we, you know, decide, a few friends of mine say, no, you know, you can't have had such a big party and then decide you're not doing anything again. So let's, let's, let's do you a, a, a dinner, let's go out. And so we go out to some club. I'm trying to remember the name, Kiza. Eh, go to Kiza. I don't talk to strangers. Let me just tell you, I struggle with strangers because I have fear of people I don't know, but that night, I was open to talking to strangers, tall, dark, handsome strangers, with power form checked in, and you know, it's the club, so me in my head, I'm thinking, hey, really, what could come out of this club, I don't give people my phone number if I don't know you, just randomly like that, and there's no money to be made, no, I mean, let's be honest. Is there money to be made? Will I, will, I, will, I, will I gain something that, you know, is out of this world I can't get from my family and friends? I gave out my number in a bar for the first time in my life at 41 years old. Stop giving out your number just randomly sometimes. Background check is important. I had no background check. I had nothing. And suddenly we're talking, it's interesting, this guy's nice. I'm setting my boundaries as also I thought, and I'm being very clear about, you know, I've now decided that I'm waiting until marriage. Um, I'm not doing this anymore. It's like, yeah, 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 no problem, no problem, no problem. But he liked the drink. He used to drink a lot. And some of those Drinking a lot moments would be like, you make a plan to meet up. He's out somewhere. He was drinking, day drinking, and then he doesn't show up. So this one time, he's um, gone to look for land with his friends in Kitengela. And you know how you call someone and you can just tell, hey, that sounds like you've been drinking. Yeah, 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 but we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. So we're still meeting at Kengele's, I'm coming guy doesn't show up. I'm calling, I'm calling, no answer. Then in my head I'm thinking you are drinking, you are far. Anything could have happened, right? So I'm now panicking as would a girlfriend or wife. But we're still talking stages. Atujafika, dating. But me in my head, when you care, you care all the way for your friends, right? Nothing. Doesn't show up, doesn't pick up, Phone goes off. Now I'm thinking he's dead. Phone's off. For the next 24 hours, phone's off. When it goes back on, he's not picking. Now, the, m the move that women make that is foolish. It's foolish because we know better. I had his friend's number. I called the friend. Oh, you know, I'm really worried. I don't know where he is. I don't know what happened. Ah, but to live with a nerco, alcohol sour. And then he went home. He's fine. I'm sure he's fine. I, I mean, we came back to Nairobi. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this, this here we go again. You have learned nothing. You're 41 years old. 41. What's wrong with you, foolish girl? I'm really angry at myself. And as usual, after silence, he resurfaces with some half 
story. I don't even think I wanted to hear the half story. So he gives his friend his phone. Guys, don't do this. You give your friend the phone. What's that about? Friend tries to give me the story. I tell him, now, me, do I know you? Just give the owner of the phone back his phone. And if you don't want to talk to me, please, let's not talk again. And that was that. And so in my head, I figured it's over. It was never, it actually never started. So good riddance. In that whole time where we had gotten to know each other, he had told me about his mom being unwell and his um, mom needed to go for a surgery. And so we had all contributed to support. And I remember he had also been there for me, had lost my cousin and he had been there and, you know, sent money. So I was like, you know, it's the right thing to do, send money. So I had sent money. And so about, I guess the mom was supposed to travel two months after we've had this debacle of, you know, we're not talking anymore. And then he, suddenly, after two months, the phone rings. Jaluo Jeuri with power phone. He tells me, hi, I know it's been long. I just wanted to tell you that my mom died. I don't know about you guys, but when someone's lost someone, it doesn't matter what happened. It shouldn't matter what could have pulled you two apart. There's a reason that person called you and they need your help. And I felt completely that I needed to help. And I, th I said, you know, even if I'm just going to get a little bit of shopping, go to the house, say Paula, and walk away, there's a reason he called me, so I'm going to go. And so I did exactly that. I remember um, one of his friends was actually buying some, I mean, picking some tents and things in my area. He even says, you know what, let me come and pick you up. Let's go. I'd never been to his place, but he, his friend picked me up. I didn't have my car. I don't know where my car was at the time. And so we go, and I've got shopping, and I get there, and it's, it's a whole sad affair because his mom and him were really close. He was the last born. His two other sisters lived in the States, and word is they couldn't come home because they didn't have papers. So he was alone. His father had died a year before, and so it was really taking him by storm. And I just said, you know what, put aside everything you felt. There was no one there to kind of plan or help. His aunties were arriving a bit later, and all his boys were doing were sitting with their whiskey and drinking under the tent. Nobody was discussing anything. Nobody was coming up with a plan. And I had come from planning a funeral for my cousin, so I knew things need to move. And especially if you're bringing a body from outside, the, the mom had gone to do this surgery in India, so there's cost, cost, cost coming. The faster you move, the better. Because I'm my mother's daughter, I swung into action immediately and said, now, guys, Things need to move. They need to be done. We need coffin, but da do da da. Costs, estimates, suppliers, uh, ooh, ah, everything. By the time the aunties came, they were sure that I must be the woman of the house because, halas, I have everything under control. I was there every day. You know, I, I didn't give that somewhere. I didn't know where I had. I did not know where I had taken myself. Suddenly, the aunties have my number. Now, did you know someone for flowers? I said, yeah. What flowers do you want? Imagine you just choose for us. Her color was there. You choose. You guys, I chose flowers. I used to cook food for him to eat because he's not eating what other people are eating. I come out from work. I sleep two hours. I cook. I drive to South B. I plan the funeral as if it's my relative. I'm discussing what the aunties will wear. (Laughter) 
they didn't have a pastor. We need to pray. <laughs> the mother lived in a crew. Her church people are in a crew. They're not going to come and conduct mashakaya. So now, <laughs> I need to consult and get a pastor to be coming. Because it is the way my mother taught me, we have to pray. When that body lands from India, who will receive it? How, how, you can't just, do, you get me, like in me? And that is how I met Pastor George. <laughs> I called the friends I know because I, for me, when I was dating someone, I used to ask him if he knows God. I had a relationship with God when I was younger. I, I got born again when I was 13. Then we had a fight with me and God. And then I just told him, I love you. I respect you. Like, let me, let me leave life, Kidogo. I'll be right back. And so I had life. But it was important. If anyone's going to be in my life, they need to know God. That was something that was in me. So I had asked all those questions. And he said, yeah, occasionally I go to church at Parklands Baptist. So now I was looking for a pastor from Parklands Baptist. But he said to me, but you know, they don't know me. And I'm just thinking, yeah, because you always hang over on Sunday, but it's okay. Let me just find. So I called one of my friends who I believed goes to that church. And she said, uh, no, actually, I don't know any of the pastors there. But I know this um, very amazing um, young pastor who's very um, open to you know young people. He understands that young people are of the world, but they can find their way to Christ. So he listens and he's capable to to connect with you if this is a person you're saying who doesn't really go to church and they need help and so now i'm there thinking okay okay i need to call pastor george and introduce myself okay okay pastor george called me first and he says yeah i got your number uh, i was told you need help and so we go through this discussion agreed to meet at uh, kilelesha covenant church which is the parish that he was serving at and uh coincidentally, the pastors who are there are the same pastors who had helped us bury my cousin because that was her church. So I was thinking, oh, this is, this is not too bad. But I hadn't met Pastor George because during that funeral, he was not around. And so we go. Pastor George is giving me jokes in the car. He's like, don't worry. Don't worry. You, you, let's go. Let's go. You don't have your car. Don't worry. And we go. We receive the body of this woman that I don't know. I lead worship because there's no one else to lead worship. Pastor George preaches, prays, and then we go to the home. And we do another sermonette. I lead worship. Hey, my friends, I was wifed quickly in that wifing situation. <laughs> hey. And, um, and then after that, now, the part of looking for where will the service be done. They want a service in Nairobi because he's got lots of people he knows in Nairobi, you know. I walk my legs to Nairobi Baptist, our home church. And I use my parents' name and our family name to seek for permission to hold a funeral service in this church and they agreed because of me and my parents name they don't normally allow outsiders and especially when you don't have so much money to pay and so we hold this funeral service at Nairobi Baptist my parents don't know this story you guys by this time I'm inside <laughs> deep the aunties are like, you know. So me, I'm thinking, Tukifika. Nairobi service, Imeisha. Okay, see you guys. Enjoy Xoom. They tell me, Alela, yeah, no, what? You must be there. They put an air ticket, return. How can the funeral happen and you're not there? We are going. I found myself telling my friends, so now I'm going to Xoom. Yep, bury. Barry who? Just, we're just, you know, friend. Um, 
you get, I could not explain to any of my friends what I was doing because even me, I didn't know what I was doing. Huh? Hey. I'm like, I'm not cutting my hair. You guys, if you think I'm part of this home, me, that's the way I draw the line. I don't know why I'm here, but I'm not cutting my hair. But I thought you two were together. In fact, I thought you're almost married. Well, to look at talking stages, I love you. I was able to open up in a way that I hadn't opened up. I had somebody who was listening without judgment, didn't know anything about my past, didn't really know me other than having heard me before on radio and we just talked. 